Hey guys, it's Chris and I'm back with another Witcher video. Yes, a Witcher video in the middle of the void where there is nothing going on except the, we do know that Witcher Season 2 is back in production, so that's going forward. I think most of us Witcher fans are excited about that as well, so we'll see that sometime late next year likely. But I was surprised today that Netflix actually announced a Witcher spinoff. <laughs> All right, so I found this tweet earlier, and I was honestly a little shocked about it, so I wanted to see what you guys thought about it. But here we are over here on Twitter and Netflix, and this was interesting to, to come out of nowhere because nobody really expected all this, uh, but I'll read it here. And some of the replies, too, because I think people have mixed emotions about it, the same as I do. 1,200 years before Geralt of Rivia, the worlds of monsters, men, and elves merged into one, and the first Witcher came to be. Announcing The Witcher Blood Origin, a six-part live-action The Witcher spin-off series from Declan Debara and Lauren Smith uh, Hisrick, I believe is how you pronounce that. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. So they're already announcing a Witcher spin-off, The Witcher Blood Origin, uh, about the first Witcher when it was created. So I thought that was interesting. I have mixed emotions about it because it's almost like you know you're excited to hear about you know the history and lore even if you only saw the TV show and hadn't have not read the books where it is kind of spelled out as far as the history and lore so that's that's good in, in itself but it's really odd um, thinking about watching a Witcher show without Geralt or even like Yaskier or Dandelion or Yennefer or whatever it's almost like Star Wars without lightsabers or the Sith you know where it's just some random dark side dude from the unknown regions of space that turns out to be nothing and they kill him off in the second uh, sequel trilogy uh, movie. Anyway, I think it's really odd. I, I don't know. It's really interesting. I mean, obviously, this is something I think is cool on one hand and not so on the other because I'm really interested in seeing, you know, the stories that I've read in the book so far, the short stories and getting to the novels play out on the big screen, just like we were excited about Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire. So let's read a couple of these responses. This first one here, uh, kind of what I'm saying, I don't want an origin story for the first Witcher. I get that some might, but why? I like the mystery of the origins and history. I like that the monster is just part of the world. Doing this feels like giving us something we don't need. Uh, and Jack responds, uh, you know, well, I mean, you could always just not watch it. And I agree with that. You know, you don't have to like it or whatever. That's fine, too. But, you know, he's just saying that he, he, would like, he likes just the world being like it is and everything don't have to be explained. But it is actually explained in the books, the backstory and everything. So... Let's see, There's here's another one. Uh, there's been one season and you think it, it's earned a spinoff. And along the same thread, we have somebody saying here, you know, what the fuck, uh, fix The Witcher first. Season one was not good. I disagree with that. It was good. It wasn't great. It had its problems. But I think overall it was pretty damn good. And I look forward to season two. And the things will start looking better as their budget increases, obviously. Uh, just like, remember, Game of Thrones had the same issue. Let's see, just me. I would love for a show to be completely faithful to the books at once. So it can be 326 hours long and dreadfully boring and terrible so people understand that it's a different medium that would not translate perfectly. It's a fair point. You know, people are bitching about how things are, you know, modified to fit TV and you just can't do it exactly the same way because it literally would be 326 hours long with people sitting around talking. <laughs> That's not going to fly on the silver screen or the small screen, whatever the fuck we're talking about. From book to television is what I'm saying. Here's Raven, a getting Witcher without Geralt is like ordering a pie and discovering that it has no feeling. Eh, I mean, I, I, I agree to an extent with that. That's kind of what I'm saying. Uh, it don't always have to be about Geralt because there are other great characters. And, you know, it's almost like the fire and blood argument with Game of Thrones. We got fire and blood coming and we're going to be watching, you know, Targaryen history that we've all read about. But it's almost like some people are saying, well, without with the shitty ending of season eight, uh, I just can't watch it. I already know how it's going to end. You know, why do you want to watch Game of Thrones without Danny or Jon Snow or whatever? So I get that sentiment as well. I, I, I do see both sides of the argument. So I don't think you absolutely have to have Geralt, but it's also kind of odd. I, I don't know, because I really am not going to really be invested in this first Witcher. Now, going back to this main tweet here, the 1,200 years before Geralt of Rivia, the worlds of monsters, men, and elves emerged into one, and the first Witcher came to be. It sounds like they're talking about kind of the conjunction of spears timeline, but if we jump over here to the Witcher fandom page, it talks about the conjunction of the spears. It says here, the conjunction of the spears was a cataclysm that affected the whole multiverse and occurred 1,500 years before the events in the novels, trapping many unnatural, in quotes, creatures in this dimension, including ghouls, grab ears, and vampires. 
Rifts were created by the collision of many different realms, filling the world with gnomes and dwarves, with hundreds of creatures of all shapes and sizes, as well as a mystical force that came to be known as chaos or magic. And if you scroll down a little bit, a cataclysm occurred 1500 years ago, trapping in our dimension unnatural creatures, including ghouls, vampires, etc. These beasts have no e ecological niche niches in their own, and they're merely relics of bygone times. According to Elven lore, humans arrived during the conjunction their own world having been destroyed. These humans' ancestors learned how to harness the power of primordial chaos, and thus the first human wizards were born. So we've seen some of that as well. But you also, if you jump over here to the timeline, it's really interesting. You have basically the canon, the book canon here, and then you have the Netflix show canon. So in the book canon, you have the conjunction of the spears around 230 BR. But if you scroll on down here, you do see that around the time of, I think, 11, no, I'm sorry, 950, uh, the first witchers are created by the renegade mages, Alzor and Cosimo. So there is the timeline for the first witchers to be created. And if you scroll down a little bit more right here, you can see that uh, the witcher Vesemir is noted as being active in fulfilling the duties of, of his profession during this year. And I believe Geralt was born in like 1168, and it's not on here, interestingly enough, on this particular timeline. Uh, here's 1173. Yennefer was born. But what's interesting, if you jump over here to the Netflix canon, because this is a different timeline, apparently, from the books, although it's based off the books, it's kind of just a looser type of thing uh, without as much detail. You have Undefined Past, the conjunction of the spears. That's obviously what we're just talking about. And then if you jump right down here, you have um, right here, 19, uh, 967, the creation of the first Witcher. So during this timeline, it's a little bit different. And then you see Geralt is born in 1160 here, as opposed to, I believe, 68, if I'm not mistaken, in the book lore. But uh, anyway, so this is basically the timeline they're going off of. And uh, I don't know. It's just really interesting that they're going to be announcing the show based off lore and history and what origins and that type of thing. Uh, when we've only had one season of The Witcher. So anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. I just thought that was really interesting. Obviously, I think it would be cool in one way, but it's like, you know, I said before, watching The Witcher without Geralt and, you know, Yasky or Dandelion and Yennefer and especially Ciri, who is the main character in this series. That's what it's all about. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's almost like the Blood of the Dragon thing for Game of Thrones. Yes, I'll definitely watch it, but am I going to be excited about it? You just can't. You just can't. So anyway, guys... Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.